Hi, this is a question based on Edexcel IAL Physics Unit 5 Cosmology. Read the question. Uh, explain what will happen to the temperature of the core of a star when it shifts from the stage of main sequence to red giant. Okay, it could be a question. I don't think there are any questions like this in the past paper. What will happen to the temperature of core of a star when it shifts from main sequence stage, you know, in the HR diagram, it's uh, shown along the diagonal, the main sequence is the uh, Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, the diagonal, is it? So you can see that uh, when it shifts from main sequence to red giant stage, what will happen to the core of the temperature? Temperature of the core, not the whole star, right? Uh, normally what we measure uh, by using uh, a method, something like uh, uh, Wien's law, we can receive the radiation, split it and uh, we can uh, measure the temperature, that is the surface temperature. But what happened to the temperature of the core, that's a question. Okay, what happens normally, uh, the main sequence uh, and red giant stage, when you consider both, a star uh, is in the main sequence means, if the core has significant amount of hydrogen fusion, that type of star is called main sequence star. Okay, so when the hydrogen fusion significantly happens in its core, the star will be in the main sequence and there will be, uh, you know, inward gravitational pressure due to the mass of it and, you know, during the uh, emission of radiation, photons can exert momentum, unit 4, we learned that. So, due to the momentum of the uh, photons, there will be outward radiational pressure. Photons can exert momentum. So, the photons, those are emitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation during the fusion. They will uh, collide the gas particles and there will be outward radiational pressure. Both these pressures will balance uh, when the star is in the main sequence. Okay, but when the hydrogen in the core is almost used up, the core will be occupied by helium. You know, when a hydrogen fused, the outcome will be uh, helium. So when the core is mainly occupied by helium, what happens? In the core, the fusion will be stopped or ceased. But there will be a little bit of hydrogen, they will occupy the outer layer. So the core will be occupied by helium and the hydrogen gas will occupy or will be in the outer layer of the uh, star. The core will be with the helium. So now what happens? The helium fusion is a bit complicated. It needs more temperature because you know the helium consists of uh, two protons. So the helium nuclei, when they collide, they, there will be larger repulsive force. They need more temperature. Uh, to continue the fusion. So what happens? There is no fusion. For the temperature, the core consists during the hydrogen fusion. It's not sufficient to continue the helium fusion. So the core is occupied by helium. The remaining hydrogen uh, will occupy the outer layer. We will, will stay in the outer layer of the star. So now there is no fusion in the core. There is no fusion in the core, but outer layer there could be uh, fusion. Uh, that is the fusion of uh, hydrogen. So, uh, since there is no fusion in the core, there is no emission of radi electromagnetic radiation, so there is no outward radiational pressure. So, when there is no outward radiational pressure, what happens? There will be inward gravitational pressure due to the mass of the star. So, there will be inward gravitational pressure but no outward radiational pressure in the core. So core will shrink because no force to balance the inward gravitational pressure. So the star, the core of the star will shrink a lot. Also, there is no fusion. So the total energy, the internal energy of the core should remain almost constant, but it might radiate little outside due to uh, thermal radiation. But the, there is no fusion, there is no production of energy uh, in the core, so almost the internal energy should remain uh, constant. But when the star contracts, what happens? When you consider the gravitational potential of the star, or gravitational potential energy of the particles, the gas particles of the core, what happens? You know the gravitational potential is given by minus gm over r. Gravitational potential energy of the 
uh, gas particles in the coils given by G M M O R. Okay, this M is the total mass of the uh, core. This M is the mass of a particular particle. So we can find the gravitational potential energy of the core. Now what happens? The star is shrinking because no outward radiational pressure to balance the inward gravitational pressure. So the star, the core of the star will shrink. When the core of the star shrinks, R will decrease. The radius will decrease. You, this you learn in uh, uh, gravitational field. You know this equation, not a new equation, right? So the radius will decrease. When the radius decreases, what will happen? Uh, the this uh, fraction will become more and more negative because the denominator is decreasing. When the denominator decreases, this fraction will become more and more negative. That means more and more negative means the gravitational potential energy will decrease. Is it? The gravitational potential energy will decrease. You know that. Uh, minus 10 is lower than minus 6. Minus 10 is lower than minus 6. So the gravitational potential energy will decrease. But I told that the internal energy should remain the same because there is no further energy, creation of energy, no fusion. So the internal energy should remain the same. So we can say that internal energy is equal to uh, potential energy, that's a gravitational potential energy, plus kinetic energy of the gas particles in the core. So potential energy is decreasing. So when the potential energy decreases, kinetic energy should increase. When the kinetic energy increases, we know that in thermal physics we learn that kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature. So the temperature of the core will increase. So when a star shifts from main sequence to uh, red giant state, initially first the core has no fusion, nothing. So the core will shrink or the radius of the core will decrease. So when the core decreases, what happens? The temperature of the core should increase because the gravitational potential energy will decrease. When the gravitational potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy should increase. But kinetic energy is directly proportional to absolute temperature. So the temperature of the core will increase. So actually what happens when a star shifts from main sequence to red giant state, the temperature of the core could become more than the temperature it had when it was in the main sequence because it shrinks a lot. When it shrinks a lot, the temperature will increase. Okay, so the question is, what happened to the temperature? Temperature will increase. The explanation, the question is about explanation. So you should say, when the core is occupied by helium, there is no further fusion because the existing temperature is not sufficient to continue the fusion reaction because the repulsive force will be more because it has more protons. So uh, there is no outward radiational pressure due to the inward gravitational pressure. The core will shrink. When the core shrinks, according to gravitational potential energy equal minus GMMOR, the gravitational potential energy of the core will decrease because it will become more and more negative when R decreases. But there is no fusion reaction, so the internal energy should remain almost the constant, so E equal potential energy plus kinetic energy. When the potential energy decreases, kinetic energy should increase, but the kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature absolute temperature in Kelvin scale. So the kinetic energy increases mean the temperature of the core will increase when it becomes, when the star becomes the red giant. That's the answer uh, you should write. Careful, this question is about temperature of the core. I am not comparing the temperature of the red giant star. What we measure is the temperature of the outer surface. This question is not about the temperature of the outer surface or temperature of the red giant. What we say temperature of the red giant drops you would have learned. That's the reason it becoming red. That is the outer surface. Outer surface what we measure. But here this question is about the core. What happened to the temperature of the core that will increase. Okay, so just now we saw that uh, the temperature of the core will increase when a star shifts from main sequence to red giant. 
But this question is about the surface temperature. Explain why we learned that. The red giant stars are more luminous. They become red because the temperature decreases according to Wien's law. When the temperature decreases, lambda max will increase and the lambda max becomes more closer to wavelength of red color. That's the reason they are called red giant. The surface temperature decreases, right? So the question is, explain why the surface temperature of a star decreases when it shifts from the main sequence stage to the red giant stage. So just now only we uh, discussed that the temperature of the core will increase when it shifts from main sequence to red giant. Core is the center part. But here this is about the surface temperature. Okay, what happens? Now already we came across that the temperature of the core increases when the star becomes red giant from the main sequence stage. Okay, so the outer layer is occupied by hydrogen. Now the core is occupied by helium. So in the core, the helium fusion could happen due to the higher temperature because the higher temperature can provide the additional sufficient kinetic energy for the helium nuclei to overcome the electrostatic frequency force. So the helium fusion could happen in the um, a core and there is larger temperature is heat is released. Now due to this higher temperature or heat released the outer layer is occupied by the hydrogen is it. So the hydrogen is going to get this higher temperature and the rate of fusion of the hydrogen in the outer layer also will increase. So the outer layer hydrogens are going to have higher rate of fusion compared to when they were in the core. That also could happen. So outer layer, the hydrogens are going to have higher rate of fusion and they are going to give out higher energy. The energy emitted, the radiation will become higher. Therefore, the outward radiational pressure will become more for the outer layer hydrogen uh, gas. So due to the outer uh, layer, they have the uh, larger outward radiational pressure that could become more than the inward gravitational force or inward gravitational pressure provided by the core to the outer layer of the hydrogen. So, when you consider the core is here, this is the core, there are hydrogen in the outer layer. So, due to the higher temperature of the core in the red giant, that higher temperature will influence the hydrogen fusion in the outer layer. So the outer layer hydrogen fusion will become much more due to the higher temperature. You know temperature influences the uh, hydrogen fusion. So what happens? The rate of fusion increases. So the outward radiational pressure of these hydrogen will become more than the inward gravitational pressure that could be provided by the new, uh, core of the uh, red giant star. So not what happened, the, due to the large outward radiational pressure, the hydrogen dose in the outer layer will expand a lot. So the rate of fusion in the core is high because the helium fusion gives more energy, the temperature is high. But due to the higher rate of fusion in the outer layer, why higher rate of fusion happens in the outer layer? Because of the temperature increase in the core influences the hydrogen fusion in the outer layer. So what happens? Due to large outward radiation pressure, the outer layer will expand, uh, expand a lot. Or some books they say they tremendously expand. They expand a lot the outer layer. Now what happens? The overall energy has increased from the production in the core is increased, but that overall energy is going to be released through larger surface area of the star because the star has expand a lot. So the energy release is going to be give out through much larger volume, a much larger surface area. Therefore, the overall temperature of the surface is going to be lower, much lower. The temperature becomes much lower because the energy has increased, energy release has increased, that is true. But that energy, increased energy release is going to be given out with much larger surface area. The surface area has increased heavily because of the large outward radiation pressure. Because when they start expanding, the core exerts a gravitational pull. When they go away and away, if you consider F equal g m m o r squared, when r increases, the gravitational pull that could be exerted by the uh, core on the outer layer of the gases will decrease. So when they start expand, expand, they will start expand more. 
So the surface area will become much larger. So the energy release is going to be shared through much larger surface area. So the energy is released through much larger surface area means the surface temperature is going to be less now. But Co has higher temperature. So the surface temperature will become much lower because the energy is going to be shared through larger surface area. That causes the red giant surface temperature to drop. So according to Wien's law, uh, lambda max T equal constant. Now T of the surface temperature becomes lower. So lambda max will become larger. It could be in the uh, visible spectrum, red color wavelength. So it appears as a red giant. That's the answer you should tell. Okay, so this is the answer for why the temperature of the surface of a red giant decreases compared to when it was in the main sequence.